We continue now with our series, Eye on Earth, Our Planet in Peril. The second day of the Biden administration's Global Climate Summit is underway this morning. Leaders from around the world are meeting virtually to try and curb the planet's carbon output. Yesterday, President Biden recommitted the United States to cut our greenhouse gas emissions by 50 percent by the end of this decade. And China reaffirmed its pledge to be carbon neutral by 2060. Climate activists and scientists say we can still take measures to slow the warming of the planet before it's too late. But Climate researchers also have evidence that we are dangerously close to a number of catastrophic tipping points. Joining us now to discuss the science is CBS News meteorologist and climate specialist Jeff Baradelli. Jeff, these tipping points, you've spoken to researchers about them. What are they? Break it down. I have to tell you, it's concerning. Unanimously, all these scientists say that we are much closer to tipping points than we thought we were just a decade or two ago. And one of those we're very close to is the Amazon rainforest. So the Amazon rainforest has been around for 55 million years. But it's crazy to think that in just one century, human civilization could completely wipe it out. So far, we have deforested 20% of the Brazilian Amazon. Let me tell you why that's important. Because the Amazon rainforest is only a rainforest because it is a rain-making machine. It produces 50% of its own rain, and the way that it does that is it exhales from the leaves and the canopy. All that water vapor into the atmosphere causes a river of clouds and rainfall to fall. So it's a self-sustaining system. However, as we begin to break apart the Amazon into pieces, all those fires that you see, we reduce the ability of the leaves and the trees to create its own rain. And believe it or not, scientists say, and the foremost experts say, that we could see this lush, wet rainforest transition to a savanna in only 20 to 30 years. And Vlad, the reason why that's so important is because think about all the biodiversity in the Amazon. We'd lose a lot of that. And also, think about all the carbon that is stored there. Billions of tons would be released into the atmosphere, making climate change even worse. Let's talk about Antarctica. We've all seen those heartbreaking images of polar bears trying to find a place to land while they're swimming through the ocean. What does the rising temperatures in Antarctica mean? What else is troubling about that? So Antarctica is a canary in a coal mine. It has ice miles thick. And if all that ice were to melt, that would be 200 feet of sea level rise. Now, it has been stable for a very long time, and scientists thought it was stable, but a few years ago, they started to notice a rapidly evolving situation in West Antarctica, specifically Thwaites Glacier and Pine Island Glacier starting to become less stable. Let's talk about why that's the case. The reason is that we have warm water. Water temperatures have been warming in the oceans by two, three, four degrees Fahrenheit. It's getting underneath these glaciers, which stick out very far over the ocean waters. That's breaking up the ice shelves like a dam. The dam is is beginning to burst. And once that happens, it's like pulling a wine cork out of a wine bottle. All that ice flows from land into the ocean, raises sea levels. Those two glaciers have four feet of sea level rise. Not going to happen next decade or the decade after, but by the end of the century, we could see several feet of sea level rise swamping hundreds of millions of people who live along the coast. That's a big deal. A lot of people will say, look, this is happening on the other side of the world. I live here in New York City. What does this mean for me? Yeah, so the problem here in the North Atlantic is we have something called the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, the Gulf Stream system. Now, the Gulf Stream, we know about it. it produces warm water, brings it up from the Gulf of Mexico. It's responsible for redistributing 20% of the heat from the warm tropics to the poles. Now, this is beginning to slow down, and it's a big deal because it is a linchpin in the climate system. Near Greenland, what we really need to run this engine is dense, cold, salty water. It sinks, runs that engine. But Greenland is beginning to melt. And as Greenland begins to melt, we're seeing that fresh water flow into the North Atlantic. Fresh water doesn't sink as well. So the whole conveyor belt is slowing down. It slowed down 15% since 1950, could slow down by 45% by the end of the century. That could tip it, stop the current, and that would throw weather patterns in the North Atlantic from the East Coast to Europe completely off kilter, raise sea level rise. Remember, this right here is a linchpin. It controls the whole climate system. That's a big deal. All right, so it's a little troublesome, maybe a big trouble, <laughs> yeah. but there's got to be some silver linings. Well, for the Amazon rainforest, if we can start reforesting right now, all the countries need to work together, we can help to save it, but it has to happen soon. We're very close to a tipping point. Everything else, we need to reduce the warming of the planet, Vlad. If we reduce the warming of the planet, we can slow these impacts. They'll still happen gradually, but more gradually, it will give us time to adapt. Well, what we saw yesterday is a first step in the right direction. Absolutely, yeah, sure. Jeff Berdelli, thank you very much.